Well, good morning. This is Christian Buckley with Collab Talk. Hello, this is Michael Sobotkiewicz from Kenbo. We're talking today about the, a, a growing trend in collaboration, intranet, knowledge management systems across the board, which is that the need to focus more on the UX, that user experience, and how increasingly important this is. I'm always amazed talking with organizations that, especially um, working in the SharePoint space for so many years, uh, that are they're surprised that they go and deploy a new system and yet that that initial ramp up the adoption of the platform is very high within that first 30 45 days and then dramatically decreases after that and what happens is that you have you know everybody's interested in the new technology seeing what's out there um, but then if they find that it's too different that it's not delivering anything that they need from a personal productivity need if they're finding that it's they're having to go too much outside of the way that they need to work to accomplish you know, their work activities that they go back to their old habits their old systems and tools um, or go outside of the system and and so you have a lot of this with a poorly planned might be that that intranet that system might be meeting all of the defined requirements but without focusing so much on that user experience and understanding the end-to-end -end user experience, not just that, that intranet, that collaboration system portion of what your end users are trying to do end-to-end, -end, that, that organizations then struggle with that adoption issue. And Michael, I, I'm sure you're seeing that same kind of trend and that has to be an issue that gets brought up, user adoption and user experience when you talk with customers. Sure. I mean, user adoption is uh, the new um, the new training, the new the new um, software documentation, the new manual is actually to me. So, um, can you imagine buying? Uh, you no, know, if you can. I mean, VCR. I mean, probably that's that's outdated. But I mean, imagine buying a TV. Yeah. I mean, you buy a new 4K TV, whatever. I mean, will you? ever look for a manual or something or if you buy the new, newest uh, smartphone i mean how much uh, space is used in a box for actually a manual it's none i mean everybody expects that today that the thing will just you know start up and it will somehow guide me through and and i will be able to understand what to do in order to do what I want. And this is for me user experience. This is for me, um, um, let's say, driving adoption. And of course, um, the more we get into business, the harder it is to have a user experience that is, um, you know, um, self-understood. Because, because um, you know, uh, if you are, let's say, in this phone uh, or a TV, you know, entertainment zone, you have, you have more time and you are more positively, you know, uh, um, you, you have a more, more positive uh, aura, you know, like uh, um, how, how you want to decide to set it up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And you have time, and you, 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 yeah, you're just positive. And now, it, when you're in business, I mean, you, you still are positive, but I mean, hey time is money and you need to perform and stuff like that so it cannot take that long so um, it's sometimes very hard to to you know to to find the right way how the ui talks to you so you understand it so that's basically what consumed most of our time uh, while designing canva like how how many buttons where should they be which are obsolete which are context sensitive, uh, what should be the word, maybe a symbol, stuff like that. I mean, we were spending hours and months on, on, on designing that because crafting the UI is basically the only chance where the user say, you're going to live or die. It's like, you know, in, in, in uh, Colosseum where the, where the where Nero came down and said like, you know, you're going to live or you're going to die. That's basically the UI, uh, the only way to talk to the user. And, and, um, I think the tools, especially the tools of Microsoft in the, uh, in the last, you know, dec decade, they neglected that fact. I mean, since Nadella is uh, a CEO and, 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 and um, things were changing 
very rapidly at Microsoft. Now you see that Microsoft is also putting a lot of effort in, in user experience, of course. And, um, and uh, there are also no more manuals and big, you know, uh, um, video recordings, how to use, you know, tools. I mean, I always compare it like with SAP. I mean, using SAP without, you know, without the manual. Yeah, you'll never get, it's a non-starter. I mean, you have to, it's, yeah, right. Yeah. It's impossible because it's very complex. I understand that as well. But still, users coming from the custom side of the story. So the customization, um, or the, I don't know how, how it's called. It's, it's about, you know, that we are looking first at the customer side, uh, how things are used. And then we were trying to project that into our businesses. And, and it's hard to explain that at home I can use a device without reading a manual. And when I work, I need to read a manual. That's just doesn't, right. doesn't, well, doesn't. You, you had a lot of that conversation five, six years ago about the consumerization of yeah, exactly. that enterprise word, yeah. technology. And a great example of that was if you look at like how um, OneDrive and, and, the, and just the, u- the user experience of OneDrive. And this ability to, to drag and drop and certain controls if you right click on a file and being able to move and share and kind of all those things and how different of an experience it was to do similar activities like within SharePoint. And so a, great someone, a, light, a light went off with somebody somewhere that said, why is that user experience different? We should have it consistent. And in fact, in the uh, May 16th, 2017, the, the SharePoint uh, a virtual uh, uh, summit that they did that you know out of Redmond, and so Jeff Teeper led that, and Dan Holman team um, had made a lot of announcements there. One of the announcements was around um, the unification of the sharing capabilities. They're trying to make sharing consistent across Office 365. So if you're working in OneDrive or working in SharePoint or elsewhere, that it would be a similar experience. Now, this is something that, I mean, you and I have talked about again and again, and, uh, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer, like, why did it take Microsoft so long to figure that out? But again, it goes down to, it comes down to, um, there, it finally, uh, the, the, you know, the, the measurements you know, were substantial enough for Microsoft to understand we need to go and solve this, and that we are, it, it's an adoption issue of, new features, new technology that's superior, but has a different user experience. And, you know, it's, it doesn't have the same quality of user experience. If I'm having to click too many things, if it looks different, if it's not in alignment with the way that I'm used to um, using similar technology, competitive technology that's out there, then people are not going to adopt. So let me ask you this, um, you know, from that perspective, of usability. I mean, when you're developing the, the user experience in, in Cambo, I mean, how much are you looking at the way that people work today and trying to build the user experience to adapt to how they're working today versus showing people, hey, here's a new way of working, a better way of doing things. Because it isn't it kind of a battle between those things. They're used to this, even though it's inferior, you want to train them over on this, this, this other path, but you can't just make it dramatically different because they'll struggle then to adopt that new technology. How, how do you guys address that? Oh, well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge issue because see, we, we spent years, over 15 years in, in, in enterprise projects and, and we were dealing with customers, you know, sending emails, premise project files, Excel files, resource planning files, stuff like that. And, you know, you see tools that came out of Microsoft mostly that were basically making this kind of thinking and, 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 and working better and better and better. But um the level of improvement was sinking uh, with every release because this 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 methodology and the way they they were doing it uh was not efficient and if you would then uh you know, like like crash it and rebuild it from from the scratch let's say scrum agile completely new methodology how to approach problems then you need tools that basically work from a completely different perspective where real time, where 
uh, movement where changing is actually the new uh, basis. So, so you, whatever you can rely, I mean, one thing you can rely on today is so, that something's going to change. So you need systems that basically can can breathe with change, and 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 that's why you cannot, uh, you know, show users or I mean, build something that is using the old old way of old fashioned way of doing things things not because we just want to be modern and, and, and nice and new and fresh no uh, some of the old things are still good but um, um, the way we see the world is we understand how enterprises work we understand where they want to be where they want to go and we sort of cannot wait you know for all of them to jump to the new thinking so basically when they jump over we will be waiting on the other side uh with this new set of tools prepared for the next wave and we can only show the benefits and just argument with logical you know uh, chains of arguments that this is the way the world will move, move forward and and um we can encourage them and build bridges to migrate the old world, but to migrate it into uh, new buildings that have a different uh, different schema, and some of the information will 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 not be used anymore, and because they are too old or whatever, and 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 it's it's a fight, and um, sometimes uh, we 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 have, you know we show it to the customer, the customer loves it, and then it's shown to other people from the from the company, and they they look at it and they they, and they don't understand, and then we know like okay. They have few evolution steps before them before we can really get into it. And th there was, I mean, I found out also with um, with Swisscom uh, as we were uh, um, having a, a many talks over the years that certain parts of organization and some other organization, also big ones, we, you cannot, you know, give guys i mean sorry for 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 this for this um um analogy but i like it very much like imagine you will go to the guys who are living you know somewhere in 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 this um how do we call them uh, in in a mountain a hole in the mountain um uh in the, in a cave in a cave yeah in a cave yeah in a cave to yeah, cavemen and you would show them a, a you know a lighter then you know they will look at it and they will probably take a stone and then just a question and say oh it doesn't work you know so you have to wait until they, you know, understand that, you know, making a fire is like life important and making fire fast, it's even more life important. And then maybe if you show them the lighter, they will say, oh my goodness, this is great. So this is basically what you cannot change. If they are in the cave, I mean, you can, you can come with a great lighter, they, they, will, they will probably crash it and they will not understand. So that's basically where we are in some situations. And... Um, yeah, I also have this T-shirt. Uh, you, saw, you saw that probably on the European Sherpa Conference where, you know, I have those two guys that are you see, they're pushing a, a, a wagon full of uh, stones, but they have, uh, you know, uh, square, square wheels. wheels yeah. you know, and and yeah. this guy behind us is holding those two wheels, with, says Canbo, like, hey, and the one is like saying, uh, oh, no, we're too busy. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. This is basically where, where, because this situation was so striking for me, that's why I chose this one to basically express that uh, we can only give you the wheels, we can only go show you the door, but it's not uh, basically we, we cannot do uh, you know the the caring. So that's well, basically you know there are some organizations that that have that figured out. They they know that hey, look, we see the vision, the future of where the what we can do. Um, the, 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 but we know that it's going to take us multiple steps to get there. And it may be that there is a kind of a metered path to the future where they may introduce certain things, get that, that awareness change, some of the, the outmoded, outdated processes, you know, to this, this next step, this next phase. And so they may do just this very, you know, this slow um, set of, you know, of, of steps over that. I mean, the other thing that we've not really talked about that I think is, is also an impact by these kinds of changes is, is the cost of context switching between the, the various tools. Because something that's really powerful about a tool like, like you know, Cambo as well is that it's, it's putting all of your work activities that you may be going to multiple systems to go and manage these things, you know, into one place. Uh, and, and so, I mean, the way that I, that I use it, great 
example of this is that when I'm, um, and Microsoft is actually touching on this topic a lot. I mean, uh, especially now if you have Microsoft Teams. One of the benefits of Microsoft Teams is that it's a way for you to surface uh, in one location kind of all the different systems that are relevant for this project team. So my company, Collab Talk, and I've talked about this before, and as, as you and I have talked about Microsoft Teams and, uh, and the things that Cambo is doing working with Teams and SharePoint, um, is that I have a a team set up for Collab Talk customers. And then I have a channel set up in Teams for each of the customers. So what's great is I can work with one of my employees on a one customer, like Cambo is a customer, and so we've got a channel set up for that. So we have tabs then set up inside of Teams for every aspect that's important for my team, my organization to work with Cambo. We've got your website. We've got, uh, you know, the project management site, a board set up, um, as you're aware, because we interact on it, you know, almost every day, um, th visible through a tab, as well as other, you know, your social profiles and any other relevant sites, all in one place. So if I want to talk with somebody on my team about this, the, that user experience is that it's all it's all encompassed within one place. So they're, they're not having to go and open up different applications and jump out to a browser and have multiple browser windows to get a full picture. Everything that we need is right there. Now from a Cambo perspective, it's really looking at that next level of granularity below that. Um, and it, it's saying that, okay, that's, that's great. But when I'm working on work activities, when I have specific tasks, that I have uh, you know, a couple different Cambo boards or even within a single board, like the marketing activities I'm helping you guys with is, um, is being able to go into a card and make sure that everything that I need um, to co successfully complete a task is all there. So I've got my SharePoint documentation, I've got links out to the relevant sites, I've got you know, everything that I need for this to complete this task with all the work items in that card that's a very powerful way of, again, um, reducing the, the context jumping that happens in between those locations, puts everything that's relevant to that work activity in one place. Um, so I'm reducing the context switching and improving that user experience within Teams. I'm reducing it even more using Canbo as, as part of that around those work activities. And, and so I, I know that that is, when you guys are thinking about that too, is that you're looking at how you know, SharePoint continues to evolve and new platforms, new tools like Microsoft Teams comes up, that it's about improving the overall user experience and, that, and then you know, how does Cambo fit within each of those different scenarios to again, reduce that context switching. So we, we think, that Teams is a great enabler, and um, it. Uh, I think someone from Microsoft said it. I mean, it 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 all starts with a conversation, and and even even if if you don't know that you're gonna end up with a project or whatever, you start talking like, well, let's do this or let's do that or this customer ask this, and I mean, this is basically how it starts, and then at a certain point you you realize, okay, uh, we need something that is more persistent. And once I put information there, I would like whenever I open them to have them in the newest versions. And I also would like not only to see, you know, the newest version, I would also like to see the way it's got there. So tracing, how did this context evolve from last week to today? Or it's now here and I want to know when a certain change happened and who did it. So basically keeping that information inside of that context is, is very important, um, not only for content switching, but also that uh, you know how we got here. Uh, so, so and, and, and of course, what, the idea um, of, of why Canva can go even deeper is that we want to integrate or we want to keep the context, uh, in the context, um, not so much the systems like in teams you've got tabs and you can have a tab from this system and from that system and maybe even show a certain information from that system that are somehow relevant but still this is a different system um what about if you could take out of the tab or out of this uh, this page that is displayed in the tab 
two or three fields that are important for you and put them with five fields uh, in five fields uh, from a different system and then maybe three documents and uh, uh, two, two other guys that you're working on and having this kind of granularity on the data level captured by, by something that you open, which happens to be a card, but it's actually a context. And, and then whenever piece of this information that you captured there, that you put in there changes, you will you will get a notification and and it will be all traced. So that, that's a great distinction because I, I might have a task that you've assigned to me to go and do. The completion of that task, I may need to go and reference three other projects that uh, you know uh, and and artifacts within the documentation from each of those, um, and that I want to reference. So within that card, I can then have links to and have content you know that's attached to the card from those three very you know different areas all like crm for example on a vision right, right. Yeah. so that i mean that's that's an uh, important distinction where it's one thing to be able to like through microsoft teams be able to have a link and, and have within a tab you know within the browser window to each of the tools maybe even opening up to the relevant projects or or uh, you know in the crm to the, the, the customer uh, you know, account information for each one of those. It's another thing within the card to have subsets of data from each one of those tabs embedded in the card. So I know that when I invite then a third person in, you know, I invite Steven into the, the collaborate and we assign him some of those tasks, everything that he needs are right there within the card. Um, and if he needs to expand his view, expand you know beyond what we've included in this, he's got quick access through Teams to those other systems. But as we're outlining this task, it's it's all granular. It, it, it's very granular. It's it's right there um, so that everything that they you know need can be you know associated with that that card. And so you're right. It's just a much deeper level, more personalized experience, user experience for the completion of those work activities. And it dissolves completely the boundaries between systems. You are not talking in systems anymore, or this information is in this system or something like that, and I need to have a link or a tab. No, you're saying, I am diving into a context, and now I see all the relevant information, and when something is missing, you just add it to the context, and you are talking about contexts then. I mean, I'm jumping into this card, and it has information about this topic and then jumping in another card, it has information from that topic. And where the data basically comes from is by the end of the day is irrelevant because the user needs to accomplish a certain task or accomplish work and he needs certain information. Of course, we will not be able to display all 20 fields of a deal or a customer or opportunity or whatever entity you want to have in the card. Or what about the three most or four most important one? And if you need more, you just click on that. And then you, it will open a new window, a new tab in your browser or whatever. And then you will see the whole entity displayed through the form or through the system where it basically comes from. Campbell only has this information that are most relevant to you and that you don't want to look up in the system all over again. And it traces. So all the changes done for example, to the deal in the Dynamics CRM. They, when they were changed, you can see in the card that there, someone changed this information and it's, it's a part of a context stream of the stream of yep. the card. That's so, an important so that, thing. So if you're pulling a document from SharePoint library and someone back who doesn't have access to Cambo, that card, but updates the, the source document over in SharePoint, it's reflected within that card as well. So it, it, you're, you're- In all cards, Chris, right. in all cards that are basically right. referencing this document because we, I mean, this document can live in many contexts and this is only, this is, this is okay. You don't need to copy that. And so if someone changes this document, he doesn't even know how many contexts he changes. And that's all right, because he needed to change that document, but all people where their contexts are relevant to them uh, will be notified through the change of the document that was attached to their context. So they, they see the change from their site, how they designed the site of the story. So that's you, that's you basically... Know, and and that it's so important to maintain those parent-child relationships and 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 to to uh, 
you maintain the, then the context, the relationships of the, uh, of the source sites and where those things come from. But it all comes down to where we started around that user experience and reducing that context switching between them by allowing you or you and I as the people who created the card and said, hey, we need to go do this work activity. We need to complete these, these tasks that are part of this work activity and pull people into that is being able to add the relevant uh, uh, you know, uh, content and systems and links and things so that whoever we, whomever we assign to that task has everything they need to accomplish that, you know, within the body, the, the context of that card. And I know we've, we've kind of jumped around to that. It's a big topic. It's an important topic around that user experience, but, um, you know, Michael, I you know, appreciate your time on this, and I'm sure we'll be diving into uh, details around that, just that conversation in uh, future discussions. But thanks a lot for your time today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you.